Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's session. I am Ankit Sharma, Finance and Accounting SME at Unixed. Hope you all are doing great. Today, we have with us our in house expert in data science, Mr. Akhil Arun Manan. He is working as a data science subject matter expert at Unixed. Mr. Menon is pursuing his PhD in the Internet of Things. He has nearly 12 years of experience in teaching and industry. He has also ob obtained Google Certified Educator Certificate for Level 1 and Level 2. His research interests include wireless sensor networks, robotics, computer networks, and machine learning applications. Today, he will be taking a session on data visualization with Python. Mr. Akhil Menon, Thank you for agreeing to take this session for us and over to you. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you, Ankit, for that wonderful introduction of mine. So let's start without any delay. So uh, let me give you an introduction of mine. Let me just share my screen. OK, let's go to the presentation. Great. So today's session is on data visualization with Python. Well, I'll come to why Python, but let me give you a little more introduction about myself. Ankit has covered most of it, but again, a little. So, uh, currently, I'm working as an SME data science uh, for Unext. I also handle other subjects with IoT, robotics, uh, machine learning, and uh, basic IT subjects. I have around 12 years of experience with respect to industry as well as uh, academics. I have worked with many projects for uh, industry specifically for make for india during the covid times i have completed my education in electronic uh, my engineering in electronic and masters in embedded systems currently pursuing my phd in iot with respect to its applications in agriculture my hobbies are data and enthusiast i am a diy enthusiast and i like to play with data well the reason i have highlighted data is well today we are going to play with data a little I like to work with live projects and I like to build projects during my spare time. Uh, my skills and languages include programming with C, Java, Python, JavaScript, uh, scripting with HTML, full stack development with respect to using Django frameworks, using React framework, using Angular, and building projects for specifically creating dashboards. I'm a robotic specialist, so for any uh, for anything with respect to robots, how to build them, how to use them, how to ideate around it, all of those things. Uh, as Ankit mentioned, I am a Google certified educator at level one and level two. Currently, I'm also pursuing certification from EC Council for blockchain, as well as uh, one from Blockchain Council on becoming a Solidity developer. Let's go ahead. Now, we do know that there are a lot of data around lying around us and the data that computer understands is this that is 101010 correct so if this is what data understands how do you how do you make sense out of it for example uh, let's take stock markets take stock market just download any excel data that you have or download the financial statement of a company that you want to work with there are so many columns there are so many rows, but if someone asks you to give a report based on that Excel data or a database of data, will you be able to give one? Don't you think it will take you a little more time to make a, make sense out of it, clean the data and then display? Rather than showing ones and zeros, don't you think this is what will be better with charts? or visualizing the data that you have in your Excel sheet in a very, uh, what to say, vivid manner. 
this is again a black and white column bar chart but don't you think it will be awesome to actually view this in colorful manner manner or in scattered points well today we'll be looking at few of those things but how to do this and what are the softwares or tools that you can do use to create this off first of all most of the data that you get is in excel so you can use excel itself to create charts but then you kind of get limited when you want to actually create a dashboard i'm not saying that you can't create a dashboard using excel but it takes a little time next is by using python it's one of the most used languages these days one because of being open source and so many different libraries created with it and using this libraries you can create dashboards of data you can create uh, what to say interactive dashboards you can create multiple plots with each other next is power bi now power bi is a tool that is in the market for a long time it's given by microsoft but one thing to know about power bi is it's very easy there's no programming to be used well we'll come to that later also tableau same features like power bi a little more and obviously both are paid software so depends on your company's policies or your policy to check which one you want to buy now this image actually doesn't make any sense but what if i say that the image actually represents data in represents a very biological form of data and some a biology enthusiast can actually make sense out of it well let's get started but before that let's see what exactly do we do or what are the steps to follow to visualize the data now most of the data that we have are in a form of big data that is a, a huge amounts of data are stored in some database in some cloud or in excel let's take for an example a school or an engineering college so, say that an engineering college that start started in uh, in late 80s and this is almost 2023 so that is 40 years of data but 40 years of students data now we all know every year of the way admissions happen in india for engineering every year has more than 3000 to 4000 students that is for the first year imagine the same amount of students for all the years that is first second third fourth that is 4000 into 4 that is 8000 students worth of data and that spread across in 40 years 8 into 4 that gives you almost 32000 data again you need to understand this is only for a single subject over the course of four years an engineer studies more than 20 for 30 to 40 subjects so this 32000 will get multiplied by that 40 that basically just increase that zero in that 40 itself increases the 32000 to 320000 and multiply that with four you will get 66 lakh 40000 of data it seems small isn't it but put it in an excel sheet and try opening on your desktop it will take n number it will take at least 10 minutes for your system to process the number of columns the different types of data because remember this will not only have text data it will have images it will have links it will have scores it will have data which is in mixed format so there are five steps that you usually follow to basically come up with data which is the first step is data modeling for data modeling we usually use libraries like tensorflow keras pytorch or scikit-learn next is manipulating the data now obviously there are six lakh 20 uh, what is uh, 6 lakh 40000 rows of data but don't you think while this is happening there are more columns as compared to rows there might be hundreds or thousands of rows with the 6 lakh 40000 rows of data well while you are doing that way you need to manipulate the data based on what exactly do you require moving ahead next one is a database now database can be anything if you are an it enthusiast your database is sql your database is uh, postgresql your database is mongodb or nosql whereas if you are a 
let's say for an example an accountant or a finance person your database is an excel sheet both of these things come under database and you need to make sure that the data in this database is proper next is visualizing this data now we all know about machine learning we all know about artificial intelligence the whole point of doing this is to make sense of the data and to bring an output now visualization is part of data what to say data warehousing or data mining where you represent this data properly on to the users so there are data that you will be having which makes sense to you but do you think that same data will make sense to an outsider or to your client for that matter no that is where visualizing comes into picture also the last part of this is deployment deployment basically means how do you deploy the data or where do you deploy this data are you showing it as a visual uh, uh, so a web dashboard or are you showing it somewhere else to do all of this we usually require multiple tools well that's where python comes into picture for almost anything and everything you only require python and excel at this point of time to work with data to visualize data to make sense of the data analyze data bring some output out of it now let's see now let's see what are these different uh, sorry for that now let's see what are the different libraries that python offers us while we are working with this okay for data modeling as i uh, mentioned earlier we have tensorflow we have keras we have pytorch we have scikit-learn for data manipulation we have two main libraries or major libraries that are being used right now which is pandas and numpy for database or to connect with database we have a library called as sql alchemy for database visualization we have multiple libraries that we can go across a few of them are matplotlib, seaborn, bokeh, pyplot, pygal, scipy.org and much more. For deployment, there are three framework software, there are three framework libraries that can be used, out of which there is one is Scrappy, the other one is Flask and then there is Django. Well, today we'll be not going to at till the deployment part of this process, but at least till the data the data visualization part. But so let me show you what exactly we'll be doing at the end of the session today. Before that, now you have tons of data with you. What do you think? Which data, which chart of out of this is something that you want to use? Most of these charts are static, but the chart over here, the one on uh, the second from the left on the first row, it's an interactive chart. If you click on the chart or if you notice there are connections if you see the brown uh, brown line on the top it is connected with one part on the right hand side and the other part on the left hand side similarly if you see on the rightmost of the rightmost chart on the first row it looks like a tree but to be honest it's not a tree it's again a graph it's again an interactive graph which looks like a neural network well these all charts depend or you choose a chart depending on what is what uses it to you or how will others use the data from this okay let's move ahead this is the final output that we'll be looking at which is we'll be creating a basic dashboard or at least elements of this dashboard to basically represent the co2 emission of the previous few years well, before we come to this, let me show you a few basic charts that can be used. Give me a few minutes. Let me just go to my tool that I'm going to use today. So, usually when you use Python, there are tons of libraries that you need to install, correct? Whereas this time, I'm not going to use any libraries. I'm not installing any tools. The tool today that I'm going to use is called as Google Colab. Now I, I know Google Colab is something that's uh, what to say, not new. I would say I've been using Google Colab for the last three years, 
But Google Colabs is a basically cloud platform where all of your processing actually happens on a different computer sitting somewhere, somewhere in the globe. But for, for us, it is over here. So it doesn't take your computer's resources. It doesn't do anything. Everything and anything and everything that you have to do on Google Colab happens somewhere else. The output is faster. Every output you can see over there, you can copy the data, you can delete the data and you can do a lot of things like that. Okay, so let's see how to go over there. So you basically can just open any browser. For today, I'll be using Chrome. It's easier that way. Give me a second. Okay, so basically you can just go onto the search bar and search for collab or collab not notebook. Click on it. You can plug the notebooks that's already there. If you're using collab for the first time, you will not have any of these apart from the welcome to collaboratory link. Let's create a new notebook and call it. It's initializing. Okay, it's initialized. Now let's name this book as charts dot IPYNB. Now here IPYNB actually stands for interactive Python notebook. If you are uh, used to working with Jupyter notebooks, you again know that all the files that you store save over there or keep over there are basically used. What to say? are basically used with IPY and store it that way. Now I won't go towards the features of this tool. I will just show you how to work with this. So today, first thing what we'll do is let me create a text box and write the first library that we are going to use today is matplotlib. Now matplotlib is a very common library used over what to say a long period of time it was the first library i guess from for python that came across to work with so before to this now we are working with google collab the data that i want to use is in my system to upload this data towards my <coughs> sorry to upload this data onto my system i will be using something called as a library called as google.collab and I will be using the feature of files from it to upload a file. Now, the beautiful, beautiful part about this is it basically gives you an option to upload any file that you want rather than only a specific file directly. Let's see. So from Google. Dot collab. Import. Files. And we create the first upload over here which is the data that we want to use, which in this case, which in this case is basically an Excel data, an Excel data sheet. Let me show you that data. Okay, let me share my screen to show you what data am I talking about. Now, this is the data that we are basically going to use today, which has around one, seven columns and approx 200, 200 or 245 odd rows. And it has multiple data out of which the data is the total bill that has happened. What is the tip that we have given? Which type of human being went there? It's a female or a male. He or she was a smoker, which day have they gone? What is the time that they went, whether they went for dinner, lunch or breakfast? And 
the size of the pack. Okay, this is the data that we'll be working with to give a basic idea of plots. I'm not going to explain how this is because we have a big dashboard that we are going to create. So let's just see how to work with this data. Let me go back to my Google Colab. Okay, now I will run this cell. Now to running this cell, there are multiple ways of doing it. You can either click on this play button or you can just press control enter. Most of the time I'm going to use control plus enter. It becomes easier. So let's do that. Now, as soon as I run this code, it will first of all give me an error because there is a typo. Now the first run, it always takes time. Yeah, it's a typo because rather than Google, I wrote Google R. Let's run it again. Now it, start, it showed me choose file. Let me click on the choose file section. Let me go to where I have stored this data. The data that I have stored is tips.csv. So let's open that. Now it says that it's 100% done. It has saved the file as tips.csv. Now let's create another code cell to work with this data. That is to manipulate this data. We are going to use the library Panda S. So let's import Panda S as whatever you want to. The next library that I'll import is matplotlib. And specifically from matplotlib, I'm going to call a function that is pyplot we'll call it as plt now let's run this now obviously this is an import import line it won't give us ideally won't give us any output now let's read the database or let's read the data so let me comment over here read the data to read that we'll create a variable called as data the panda is library use the function read now, as I showed you, the file that I showed you was in CSV form. So we'll be using the specific method read underscore CSV. The file that we have uploaded over here is tips.csv. So let's put it in quotes and let's upload it. Now, once we have created over here, basically the data variable is basically a data frame at this point. Let's print it and see how the output looks like. And this is the exact output that the way we wanted to, correct? Okay, now let's go ahead, create another code cell. Let's create the first plot. Now the first plot that we'll be using is basically to display which day, sorry, we'll be representing a plot where we'll be showing the day, uh, tips that uh, the person has received or the restaurant has received on which days. So basically it's a scatter plot or bar chart for that matter. But first we'll plot to do that with matplotlib as we have called it as PLT. For call, creating a scatter plot, you use the method scatter for which there are two elements that you need to give, which is data from data, uh, data frame data that we have created. Which column are we going to go as? The first column that we are going to go give is day. And the second one we are going to give is tip. Next, if you want to add a title, you can add a title. I'm not going to add as of this point, but I will obviously want to label my X and Y coordinates, which is plt.x label, which is our base that it will represent. PLT y label which will represent the tip presented to the waiter now we want to see this plot as well correct so we'll use the function plt dot show and let's run the code and we'll see the first output but don't you think the output that you see as of now <coughs> is a little boring it's single color what if I want to show with color bar? 
to do that i can just write plt dot color bar and i can plot this again let's see how it comes as okay it gave me an error let's see why okay so let's take the data again from the top paste it here and let's run it and let's see the output yeah it is mapped and here again if you see it is coming once again plt dot color bar yeah let's run it again and see what the issue is okay the problem over here is there is only two types of data there is only two data that is day and tip what will this colors indicate so for that we'll have the first data will be the size the color will basically be the size and the data will be that of total bill so let's add that into our scatter element and then run it this will give us multiple colors of scatter plots so here individual colors actually represent the total bill size based on which the tip was given and if you notice the tips that we are able to see are only saturday sunday thursday and friday which basically means the weekend time there is no bill or no tip given to any of the restaurants during monday tuesday or wednesday for that matter correct now next data that we are going to see is a line plot okay to create a line plot again you need to give which data will be you will be using now for a uh, year a line plot can have multiple lines let's take tip for example let's represent tip data and let's display that across our day and tip so let's go over there and Plate. see this is basically the different tips given on each day or on each number of days so if you notice the highest tip that you can get over here is 10 bucks and the lowest is zero obviously and the variation of the line you can see on which day now we know that there are 245 days in total that we have so it actually shows what is the tip presented to the waiter or to the restaurant now say that we also want to see what was the size of the pack who had the dinner so let's add one more line and let's play here you can see that there are two lines of data that we are seeing or two lines of data or representation of different versions in the same plot like this you can create much more plots let's take for example let's create a bar chart for day and tip as compared to once again as compared to what we did earlier for this we'll basically be using the function plt.bar and we are running it this is the same chart that we saw over here which is in scattered form but here in scattered Scattered form, you can actually see it's a much more better representation of data as compared to bar chart. But again, we can do bar chart as well. Now let's create a histogram of data where we are showing the variation of the total bill across the number of days that we have created. So let's create a new code cell, paste it, run it and you get a histogram of data now this is basically how you create different types of charts again this is the basic charts that matplotlib offers you can obviously create much more data on this like say for example i want to create size size is line chart over the histograms chart i'll just copy the line from the top paste it here and run it and i will get the same thing again but if you notice the total bill ends at 50 whereas the line chart goes till 250 because here the tot the highest bill amount was 50 bucks okay so that this way you can create multiple data or you can plot multiple things across each 
data. Let's see the next library, which is the Seaborn library. Now, most of these libraries are actually already included in your Google Colab, so you actually don't have to check anything more apart from this. Let me give me a second. Okay, I'm seeing the comments now. Okay, let's do one thing. We'll answer the questions a little later, but give me a second. just drinking water okay let's get back i'll show you seaborn and i immediately go towards what to say showing you how to create an interactive graph because that will take a little more of the time i thought i'll finish earlier but i don't think so that's going to happen so first let's import the library of seaborn as sns run it it has run now, what I'm going to do here is because we have already imported the data over here, which is this line or this cell, which is our cell number four, I am not going to import the data again. I will just basically start ahead and plot the data. Now to plot the data for using the C1 library, first let's do a line plot. So this is a line plot which shows that at x section uh, line so the object is line plot over here at the x axis we are using which type of what to say who came which so, uh, sorry let me rephrase that who, who actually paid the bill and then the total bill amount which over here you can as the highest amount over here is 22 and uh, the most paid the most person who paid is a male person who has paid the bill. So this is a line plot using Seaborn library. Again, if you see over here, this is basically a single line that you have to use to plot a plot something using a Seaborn library. Whereas in matplotlib, you have to give apart from histogram, but every other plot you have to give what is the x axis, what is the y axis, and specify it over there. Now let's create a scatter plot. using the Seaborn library. Again, this is an easier way. So let's plot it. Something similar, but a little more visual, uh, visual than your matplotlib scatter plot. Now, if you want to see the colors, let's do it this way. So here, this is a very good plot and it actually gives you a lot of data. So if that's if this is not the case and you want to put size over here, you will actually have a lot more colors that will come in. So you basically have total size of six. So you can see as there are multiple colors over here. Next, let's do a next. Let's create a line plot of only a line plot where we drop a single column. That is the total bill. And we have only a single axis. So let's see what the output looks like. So it gives you the output of the tip and the size, but it has dropped the total bill column. So basically the day the it automatically considers that it's the number of rows that it has to show the data as. Let's show a bar plot using Seaborn. And this is the bar plot that you get. But also this bar plot is a little different because here the color is based on the person who has paid 
and it is day and tip and it also shows a hike on the top or a pillar on the top okay after this i will okay let's do a last plot using seaborn which is a histogram now if you notice every plot that we are plotting using a seaborn library okay not that sorry my mistake paste it here and let's see the histogram over here you can see multiple things you can not only see a histogram but you can also see a line graph on top of it well this is something that we actually represent while we are doing data correct so also if you noticed with seaborn library every plot that we are trying to make has its name as it is like if you are making a line plot we use the line plot method if you are using a scatter plot we use the scatter plot method we needed multiple colors we created but that by using the parameter hue and which exact column is to be used to create the hue of the or hue of colors for the scatters again we created line plot for two different two different things which actually has come from the top cell so on and so forth for histogram it is hist plot for bar bar chart it is bar plot correct now this is the basic data types that we can create but don't you think this data is again a very small data that we have worked with what if i have a data which basically gives us say around data for more for every country on carbon dioxide emission so there's this website let me go to that website which is called as ourworldindata.org it basically creates different data sets into excel files and for here i am actually specifically looking for a co2 and other greenhouse gas emissions data if you go over here you can actually see what are the effects what are the most country profiles that's ever visited and you can screen see more stuff so here it gives you data from 1850 to 2019 you can just change this plot and you can see so if i see only 1850 it's only a bar chart let's go ahead and it creates a line plot until 2019 it gives us a very big line with three different things that is upper medium and lower and this is an interactive chart let's try and create one so to do this you can just click on this download button and you will get the data that you are looking for or actually it will take you to a github link where you can just click on the code click on download zip and then use the ovid-co2data.csv now i have already downloaded that data so let's me create a new notebook again let's name it co2 emission plot now here we are going to use a library called as install uh, uh, sorry library called as hv plot and let's do let's install that so to install a library in google colab you basically write percentage pip install hv plot the percentage pip actually allows the pip command to work over here because percentage is something that actually is used only in terminals and not in your interpreter now it's allocating the resources let's see it will get downloaded next one okay it's installing it's installing the hv plot library and it says it successfully installed let's create a new code panel let's import all the libraries that we require so over here we require pandas numpy something called as a panel to represent it on the screen or to show it on the screen then we are going to import something from hv plot uh we are specifically going to import panda s method from hv plot we are going to import files from google.colab library to import a file let's run this as it's just a basic import it will not give us any output but it will take a little time to show or to import everything that's required and it's done let's go to the next one let's also import one library for 
working with the files. So because here we'll be working with an image, we'll be working with a CSV file. So let's create an IO as well. Now let's upload a file. To do that, as we saw last time, upload files.upload. And when you run this, it will give you an option. Let's choose a file. The file that we are looking at is Ovid CO2 data.csv. We open it. Now, remember, this is a very big file. So till the time it's getting uploaded, let's actually write the next set of codes, which is to create a data frame. To do that, we'll create a variable called as BF. We'll use the pd.readcsv function. We use the bytes IO function from the IO library that we have imported. Then we call the uploaded, sorry, not the uploaded. We have written it as upload. So we use upload and then the file name. The code is still, it's only, the file is only 15% done. So till that time, let, let us go ahead and write few more lines of code and then we'll just print them. Okay. Let's print the number of columns that they have. Then let's see the data. Let's see the data of only, only for India. Okay. So for that we use DF. That's the data frame inside the data frame. We are again calling data frame and matching the country column or country column. And it specifically should be India. Okay. Again, it's only 34% done. Let's not waste any time. Next is to process the data. Now, as I told you, the first step is to model the data. Now the data was already modeled by a company. So we are just using it. Let's do a little manipulation. That is in the Excel sheet. If you note, if you go to the Excel sheet again, that you have downloaded, you will actually see that most of the columns or rows are filled with the letter NA that is not applicable. While we are working with visualization libraries, we actually require numbers to work with. So let's fill all the NA let all the columns or all the sections of this data frame, wherever NA is written with zero. To do that, we will do DF that is the data frame created and use the fill NA function with zero. And we will also create a new column into our data frame, which is GDP per capita. Here we are actually going to see for this is basically going to be created for those countries whose population is not zero and the calculation that needs to be done is so, uh, what to say the condition is that GDP by population should not be zero. So this basically will only create the GDP per capita for those countries whose population is not zero and whoever population of is sorry whoever is GDP divided by population is true or give some value, it will store there. If there is no value, it will store it as zero. Okay. The data is only 94% done. Okay, the data is uploaded, it's saving or it, it's still saving. So let's give it a minute. Okay, let's run the data frame one and you can see the data frame. So you can see the data that's there in the Excel sheet. Now I have to scroll so much. Let's see what are the different columns. That is df.columns run this cell and you can see the column. You have country, year, you have ISO code, you have population, you have GDP, you have cement CO2, you have a lot of different types of CO2 that you can see. You can also see the trade CO2 share, how much CO2 has been exported, a lot more data. Let's see the data only for India now. Okay, it has given me an error which says 
the country i think the c on the country is small yes So it gives me the data only for India and it gives from 1850 to 2021. Let's run this now because it's we have not shared any output. You won't get any output. Let's make the pipeline a little interactive by calling a DF dot interactive function. Just run it. Okay. Next, let's create a slider. Now this slider is basically created from our panel object. Okay. So we are creating a year slider, which is our slider with numbers. The slide name of the slider is year slider. We start the year at 1750. We start the value at 1750. We end at 2020. The step that we start, there are five steps. That is it's every five years. So it is 1750 to 1755. Then it will be, so, sorry, 1750 to 1755, then 1760, 1765, so on and so forth. So let's run it and see how the slider looks like. Okay, now this won't run because there is, we basically didn't create a ta extension called as tabulator. Now this is, this is basically called to show things on our, what to say, on our screen. So let's just use it over here, run it. Okay, give me a second. Sorry for that. Let me go up. Let me run this again. Okay, let me run that line again. It should basically display a slider. Okay, it will display a slider in some time. Let's go ahead and make the code. So the next code is basically what are the different buttons that we require. So on Y axis, we are basically going to create Okay, let's come here back, paste this, run this and see the output. Okay, it doesn't give you any output. Let's see the, let's basically now create a table. Okay, give me a second. Okay, now this ideally gives us a table which let me show you in a moment. Okay, it's taking a little time. So let me show you. Okay, let me open the file that I was working with. Okay, let's run the code from the start. There was an issue before. So give me like, and I'll show you the outputs. Okay, the panel is not required. Let's import the libraries. Let's choose the file. Five minutes and I'll show you all the outputs.
okay till the time this is getting uploaded let me come back and answer your questions let me stop sharing the screen let me see the chat okay so the question the first question is differentiate between data analytics and data science well data analytics is basically uh, uh data analytics is basically like uh what to say you just analyze the data and you give the output data science is to actually work with this data now data analytics 90 percent of the time data analytics is part of data science it's not exactly uh, what a data scientist actually do because data science data scientist needs to analyze the data that you have you act, you have to go thoroughly through all the data that a person will give it to you. You have to create dashboards. You have to create an output and you have to justify what the output looks like. So analytics is more like just checking what the columns are, how to do, like what I'm doing right now. I'm analyzing the data. I'm showing you what the visualizations will look like. Whereas data science will also give you an output after analyzing this data or suggest how the data can be improved or how the performance of a company can be improved. Uh, say, for example, a finance company is working with something, their uh, numbers are going down or going up. So if it's going down, how to go up or what changed because of which the numbers started going down. That's the job of a data scientist because he analyzes the data and give you the output. A data of an analytics analyticist will be only to display the data or to give you a visualization of what the different things are. I hope that answers your question. Explain difference between supervised and unsupervised learning. Well, if I start talking about it, I think this session will be only for that. But let me give you a gist of it. Supervised learning is basically how a teacher teaches a nursery kid. Everything that a child does in that class, the teacher is supervising. If the child does anything wrong, the teacher actually guides the child or guides the child on how to write it properly. Whereas unsupervised learning is data in abundance. If you go on the internet and you search, uh, say, for example, you are searching for a movie, Batman. Do you only get the movie Batman? No, right? You actually get a lot more things. You get Batman, you get uh, what to say, mm, uh, you will get Batman's other parts. You will get the uh, older Batmans that were released in 1980s, 1990s. You will get the current Batman that was released. You will also get Iron Man in that one. You will get a lot of DC movies because a lot of yawners is getting matched. Then also, if you're getting DC movies, because Batman is from the DC franchisee and keep and a lot more like that. Next question. OK, so that's unsupervised learning, because by giving just one word, you get a lot more words. And based on that words, your Google, your YouTube, your Instagram gives you output. Also, Instagram uses unsupervised learning at every second in your system. So if you are searching for, say, uh cats next time you will not only get cats video you will also get how to buy a cat where to buy a cat where will you find better cats who is how to do what is the best cat food and all of those all these is part of unsupervised learning next is about linear regression well linear regression is y is equal to mx plus c well that's the mathematical term for it where it's just a straight line so basically, when I showed you the linear plot of a uh, linear plot using the Seaborn library, there were a lot of uh, the plot that you saw was a linear plot. So to do a linear regression, it's basically it goes in a straight line. Everything is in a everything is in same pro progression. OK, that's what basically linear regression talks about. Then you have why is Python given prominence in data analysis? One, it is easy to use. It's legit language. It's legit English language. If you want to say print, it prints. You just saw me demonstrating Python libraries, which are like one or two line to create the plots. Same thing you try doing it in Excel, Tableau or Power BI. Though it is graphical interface in nature, but it will take a lot of time to figure out what should be your X axis, what should be your Y axis, so on and so forth. Why is Python preferred? Again, I answered that question very best easiest language you just write it in english and it will come there what do you prefer matplotlib seaborn or bokeh i actually will pre prefer seaborn at this point of time i have been working with matplotlib a long time 
but seaborne is something that i have recently discovered i'm working with that and it becomes a very easy it helps you a lot and there are a lot more this visualizations that you can use okay i have a question one more keeping performance in mind which library do you prefer to be used most when it comes to visualization i will actually prefer using what to say pandas uh for data manipulation also i will actually prefer using uh matplotlib to be honest because it gives me a more functional requirements of what i need to do but with the current things going on seaborn is my personal favorite it works very precisely it's very functional it's very fast i I think I have answered most of the question. I have five minutes more, but let me show you the libraries now that I was working with. So let me go back to the CO2 emission thing. Yes, it's downloaded. Let's run the code again. It's running. Your df dot columns is running. Df df is running again. Let's do a little data processing. This is what we had done. This is what I had already created this dashboard. So I was just trying to do a live coding session with you guys, but I have a feeling we are very short of time. So let me just run the code. And uh, for those who want to work with this code, I will be sharing the link, the Git link of this code, so that everyone can download from LinkedIn or YouTube wherever you are watching this. Let's go again and run this. It's run. Let's create the slider now. So the slider is created, and if I go down, it see it decreases in phase, and it increases in phase, and the basic value is eighteen fifty. So whenever I run this code again, the slider will be by default set to eighteen fifty. Let's create the radio buttons for y-axis, which is what do we actually want? Do we want CO two or CO two per capita? Let's run this. It will not give you any output. Now let's create a list of continent or a table. For these continents, which are World, Asia, Oceania, Europe, so the continents column should have these words mentioned in them. Okay, which goes till Antarctica, which is basically our seven continents. We create a pipeline of data where we use the slider. We use the country which are there in these continents. We group them by. So this is basically how you are manipulating the data. So all this is basically your pandas work. so we are grouping the data by country and year so y axis will have co2 and it will give us the mean so on and so forth so let me run this code done let's create the pipeline okay now this is your pipeline which is basically your data that you have created so you have co2 over here you have co2 per capita so you can cl click on co2 it only shows you country year and co2 if i click on co2 per capita it will show me co2 per capita column and this will just keep on going and this is data only for 1850 let's go the least it's 1750 and we have only six columns of data let me go to 2019 sorry 2020 let's see the amount of data and it will just keep on going there are more than 20000 rows of data here we are getting the data for only till 1970 and i don't know the number of rows that we actually have okay moving ahead now let's create a plot for only co2 emission by continent so we are basically going to create a line plot now and this we are going to use by doing the hv plot and if you see it's africa antarctica asia so whenever i'm clicking them let's click all of them this is an interactive dashboard so let's do this right now you can see all of them are dimmed let's click on the world it will only open the world let's click on africa it only opens the africa and if i'm not wrong the north america is the highest one with co2 emission let's go to asia and this is the case so we are still very less as compared to per capita let's click click on co2 and even there if i am not wrong asia is very sorry their world is on the top let's remove them africa is the least asia is the second most where the emission is high obviously the population is high where we stay correct let's create the next table which is emission over time by continent so this gives us time this has a lot of data again we can't basically though this is a table it actually you can't actually make sense out of it 
So let's create a plot using this one now. Same, let's manipulate. We have manipulated the data on what based on what we want. We have created the table again using which, sorry, we have created the pipeline again using which we will be using to create our plot. Let's play this and you will find the scatter plot. So this is the different types of plots that you can create using the manipulator functions. So it takes taking a lot of time and yes, you can see the plot over here, which is for 2020. Let me reduce this and you can see. Okay. It's gone to 1830. It's taking a little time to play. Okay, fine. You can find this code and run it later on and check again. Let's run the other codes and let me show you the last plot, which is the CO2 source by continent, like what type of source? Is it coal? Is it oil or is it gas? Which one is actually emitting more CO2 at this point of time? So that's done. Let's run the bar plot code. Okay, it's actually taking a lot of time. Didn't expect this much, but fine. Let it take, let it run. Until that time, I will try running something that will actually help. Now, there is one thing you need to keep in mind. Google uh, Collab actually doesn't help you to run this on a server. So for that, you will actually have to use Jupyter Notebook. But as you see, a lot of things are there which Google plot Google collab can do. The following lines of code is basically to display. Oh, again, this is taking a little time, but don't worry. I'll be sharing you uh, sharing with you the IPYNB notebook, the files that I have used everything into a Git one, uh, say by in another 15 minutes in LinkedIn or in YouTube, wherever we are, wherever you are looking at this or watching this. I really hope this session was informative i won't say knowledgeable because again this was a session to display what you can do with data visualization so this was the plot that we looked at we looked at the co2 emission by continent plot give me a second okay this is the plot that we actually looked at uh, the first one which is by country what the co2 emission is and by co2 per capita we saw the table then we went to the scatter plot. If you notice in this dashboard, the slider is over here on the left hand side of the screen. If you plan on this with Excel, you might end up spending more than two days to work with it. Whereas with Python, you can spend less than 10 minutes and obviously less than 10 minutes if you know how to code and how to use the library. So I hope that's great. Uh, great thing that uh, Python actually allows us or gives us. So I hope this session was informative. Uh, I am available on all these social media platforms. Let me just share my details. I am on Insta, I am on LinkedIn, you name it. I also have, I am also putting my Git link over here. So you can connect with me. You can ask for folks over there and we can put a lot of data on Git and help you around with that. I really hope this session was informative and you will actually go ahead and explore visualizations and let's just wind up for today. I know I went a little overboard, but I think that was necessary when specifically it comes to Python and visualizations. Let me go back and just stop sharing. Okay, let me see if there are, what is your thought about RPA and data analytics? Well, RPA and data analytics, great. That's a very, uh, that's a very big question that people have these days. Robotic process automation is mostly to work with data to automate the processes. But when it comes to analytics, RPA doesn't give you that. You can connect your analyzed data, that is your visualized data, create an output and then connect with RPA to give responses. And that is something that will be really meaningful for what to say, everything as of this point. I hope that answers your question.
great uh let's uh i'll meet you next time if uh with other types of visualization with python and more on data analytics analytics thank you and have a great day yeah have a great day